This video does not replace your instruction manual. Please read thoroughly before any operation. The Bayou Classic Seafood Cooker's lid conveniently doubles as the ramp into your eagerly awaiting cooler. The basket aid has two positions. Position 1 helps keep the splash to a minimum while you're adding the crawfish, whereas position 2 drains almost entirely, making the trip from basket to cooler a cinch. Okay, we're going to add, we're adding water right now to this Bayou Classic seafood cooker. Obviously, it's going to depend on how much food you have and exactly what you're cooking uh, for your water levels. What I did, I threw the sack in there and I just got a good idea. I rinsed my crawfish anyway, so I got a good idea where my water level needed to be, drained it out, but again, that's entirely up to you how you do that. You'll notice real quick, we've got a good safe operating area around us. We have no trip hazards anywhere around. We're going to be coming back and forth with some large poundage of crawfish. As well, we haven't created a trip hazard with our tank, our tank line. Okay, we're going to light our unit now. Again, notice no trip hazard. Safe, bottle is safely away from the seafood cooker. I'm going to open the tank all the way first. If I don't do that, sometimes this valve will trip the safety release valve in here and your flame won't, will not get big. If that happens, don't panic. Simply disconnect. First of all, close all your valves. Disconnect and reconnect and try again. <clears throat> anyway, we're going to light it here. I've got a um, wind resistant lighter. Pick them up at any local hardware store and all, also your major retail chains. <clears throat> All right, I've got it turned on barely right now. The second I open this up, it's going to sound like a jet is in the presence directly over this house. My valve is now all the way open. We're gonna let this, we're gonna close this lid and then we're gonna let this come to a boil and get ready. Okay, we're gonna add our seasoning right now. I do wanna stress how incredibly hot it is around this entire seafood cooker. No kids, no pets, sober adult supervision. Anyway, we're gonna add our seasoning. We've got our water warm. Okay, now we're gonna add more of our seasonings and garnishments. We got fresh squeezed lemons. I'm not gonna show you all of them. Gonna go ahead and just set them in. You can also lift the basket up and prop it up and set it in there and roll them in, but uh, we got our potatoes, they take the longest. Those go in. Then we've got a, a cup of garlic. Fresh crushed. 19 minutes and 34 seconds later, we are boiling. If you'll come in close with me here, you can see this is ready for crawfish. That is perfect. We're now going to add our crawfish. First thing I got to do, if you notice the hot plate holder here, I'm going to grab this handle, bring it back. Next thing I'm going to do, we're going to lift this. This basket now has very little water. Alright, we're now adding our 38 pounds of crawfish. They're in there and they're not happy. What I'm about to do right now is simply called agitation. When you add your crawfish, everything gets pushed to the bottom. I'm just going to simply grab this handle, again, thermal protection, lift and push. waking that seasoning back up off the bottom, if there's any that hasn't dissolved. We're now going to cover and wait for our water to come back to a boil. Okay, so literally four minutes and 54 seconds later, after adding our crawfish, we are back at a roaring boil. We're going to allow this to happen, lid closed, for the next eight minutes. Okay, 
two things. After you've come to a boil, you just want to turn your jet down to maintain the boil. When it's wide open like that, it's trying to raise the temperature. If you leave it like that, now we've done this intentionally, you will get what's called boil over, where the water is literally still trying to elevate itself temperature-wise and coming over your sides. This is not, if you have this, turn your jet down. All you're trying to do is maintain a good, gentle boil after you've reached boil with your crawfish. For that eight minutes, you just want a gentle boil. You do not want a roaring, violent boil. You're not trying to mix any seasoning, dissolve any ingredients whatsoever. This is solely for cooking the crawfish and any other ingredients you've added, like for example, the potatoes. Okay, so uh, we finished here. We've already gone ahead and thrown some out. I'm gonna get one more scoop out just so you can see how that works. I mean, this is the most convenient thing I have ever seen. This event table is amazing. You got four different serving trays. You've got four different cup holders that can hold a gallon of uh, a good beverage. You got different little condiment trays right here. Got these nifty little holes for paper towels. And then what's best about it, it's a garbage can. So we've got no cleanup when we're finished. I will literally take this off after we all dig in, rinse it off, bag it up, and we're done. It's gonna be amazing. So anyway, real quick, <clears throat> grab some more crawfish, and it's time to enjoy. Here we go. That's amazing. That's Bayou Classic. The optional Bayou Classic steamer kit comes with a lid, thermometer, and steamer basket that utilizes the same ramp as the full size. After you've drained your ingredients from your boil, cleanup is a snap. With an ordinary garden hose and a dish towel, you can be done in just a few minutes. Simply spray the exterior and the interior. Be sure to get all of your accessories, such as the basket and handles, you want to be sure that you get rid of all of the salts and any corrosive materials that will attack the integrity of that aluminum. Use your dish towel and wipe down the exterior, put it in the garage, and wait for the next party.